Hey everyone, it's Angela with Mystic Moon bringing you guys a soul contract reading. So a soul contract reading could be for anyone out there that is experiencing a special connection with anyone. You want to know more about this connection. You want to know why you might feel a certain way with an individual and just all the things that make up this situation. So basically before the two of you came down here into this 3D existence, you guys made this soul contract as to what you wanted to experience, what you wanted to learn from one another, how you wanted to basically inspire the other to heal or change in positive ways so this could apply to any kind of a situation this does not have to just be romantic even though that's that's usually how I will channel situation it does not have to be a twin flame connection it could be any other connection but I usually do um, focus more on twin flame because I'm a twin flame reader um, but really anybody watching this can resonate to just regardless of the situation or the connection that you're having. It could be soulmate karmic, it could be a family member, it could be a friend, um, really it could be anything. So just take it as it resonates with you. You can make this reading fit however it resonates. So if something is not resonating with you, you do not have to watch this reading. No reason to be negatively triggered or to change your mind about how you feel about your connection just because you see this reading. Not every reading that people see is for them. So just watch with your own discretion, always saying that. So we're just gonna jump right into it. I actually don't even have an outline, so I'm gonna wing it today. And I have a bunch of different decks as usual. I will let you guys know when I'm using it as I'm using it. So this first one is called The Archetype Cards by Carolyn Miss. And we're going to find out through these cards here, the, the um, personality traits that the two of you uh, wanted to come in and experience in this lifetime together, okay? So this doesn't mean that you wanted to come in and have these experiences with anybody else. This is specific for this contract. What personality traits that you would display um, you know, within yourself because of this person, things that come out, just all these different things. So you guys will see how it goes. But first what I wanna do is I wanna get a main theme for this connection. What is the main theme? And it's not just one theme, but let's just go ahead and get a variety of energies to basically see what you guys wanted to focus on within this connection. So how we're going to find that is we're gonna go ahead and go through these cards called The Power of Love Cards by James Van Croft. And we're just going to see what spirit has to say. And I just feel like I want to um, draw some uh, oracle cards slash tarot cards to pick up on the themes as well. I just feel like doing that, so I'm going to. Okay, so we're going to dip into these cards right here. Okay, this is called the Psychic Tarot Cards. Psychic Tarot and Oracle Cards by John Holland. Okay, so let's go ahead and get a couple of themes here. Beautiful. You came here for wisdom. I mean, it's plain and simple. I mean, it's not simple, but the Hierophants card. This right here is ruled by the sign of Aries. Take that as it resonates with you. But you're literally here for spiritual wisdom. You can see this person here. They are standing there. They have this book. They open up that book. There is this shining light that's that's just, you know, coming out of that book. So you're literally here to learn something. That's the soul contract. So if you are you know, feeling something right now with this individual and you're having a, a really difficult time, just know right off the bat that you came together with this individual to have some sort of learning here. You're learning something. It is a lesson for you. So let's go ahead and see what, the, and I think that that says it all. So I'm just going to leave it right there. Um, that's really, really good. So let's see what else we've got going on here for the actual themes of this wisdom and lesson. Oh my God, this is the card of karma, you guys. So this is cause and effect. You are aware that the love you create in your thoughts is an agent of change and the foundation of your results. So you're here to learn something about A, the law of attraction for one, that whatever it is that you're thinking, feeling, you are creating. 
Um, so whatever you're feeling within yourself, however you feel about yourself, however you are feeling about other people in the world is what you will actually create. You will create your own reality. And so you're here to learn this concept. You're also here to learn that whatever it is that you put out, you're going to get back. So remember, this is you and this other person. So this is for them as well. It's not just your lesson, but you guys literally came here to learn this together. So right off the bat, we're talking about people that came here because they're not screwing around. They they want to learn something major here and we have willingness you are able to compromise if the end result is love so there is this willingness so basically this is all about free will as well so with these contracts and I've heard this time and time again whether it be clients coming to me or just certain you know um, people's ideas that these contracts are just something that we don't have control of that this is something that's going to happen this is something that you have to do you're bound for life and i don't happen to agree with that there are other readers out there that may um, disagree with me on that but it's just to my understanding here there's that heartbeat again with my camera it just does that um that everybody has free will within these contracts so we come we come here to have this experience we want this experience we signed up for this experience but maybe we get here and we have other things that either seem more important or maybe we go down a certain path and it takes us away from you know our higher selves and so it takes us a really long time to basically get on this on this path with this person or to enter into the contract and actually do the work okay you have a special connection with somebody you come together and sometimes another person pulls out of it you can feel it on every on every uh, or with every cell in your body how important it is but they're just not getting it and they're just not feeling the same at that time that is because they're just not on that same vibration with you at that moment some some of some people will you know eventually evolve into that and others may never evolve into that so that's why it really is about free will but you guys did come into this contract both willing parties okay of course your higher selves created this contract so you're willingly wanting to do this you want to do this there's a willingness on your part to want to do this so if the end result is love, then you're able to compromise with that. And we have compassion. You demonstrate the language of the heart by actively sharing and living love. So there is something about compassion that the two of you wanted to work on. So what I am getting from spirit here is that that might make this relationship or contract with this individual a little difficult because this is the thing. This person could really trigger you or you could really trigger them in a very negative way. And that is because in order for us to experience, you know, unconditional love, we have to have compassion in our hearts to be able to get to that point. And sometimes that's really difficult. So sometimes our enemies can, can be our biggest teachers and lessons in a lifetime. So I'm not saying that this person is your enemy or you're their enemy, but I definitely am sensing some sort of big challenge with this person because if you're one of your themes is compassion, it's it, it takes a lot to have compassion for another individual and to have compassion for yourself for basically doing certain things or acting a certain way within this contract this person could do a lot of things to you and you just basically act somewhat crazy and then you have a hard time forgiving yourself for acting so crazy or for letting this person get the best of you whatever the situation is it is about having compassion for yourself and this person so you guys wanted to come here and learn something major about karma and cause and effect period so that's the main that's the main theme here and you have you both have the willingness to want to do this you guys both have to be on board for this connection to really, really bring out this lesson. And you got to have compassion for the other person if they're not on board right away or they don't get it or they're not awakened enough to this connection to see that this is the contract that the two of you created. So very, very interesting. So literally what I'm, uh, I'm just also getting from spirit here is this, is that you may come into this contract with them and they may not get it ever or for a long time. And you're so one of your lessons individually on your own is compassion. You're learning something about having compassion for this person that is a, that is sleeping. You're awake. They are sleeping. So that is a, so 
you guys came here for a huge lesson, but this is like, let's put this aside on the shelf. This is now your lesson, compassion. I just love the way it came on the side. This is this is the contract between you and them, and it's almost like this is a little side lesson. This is a little side side snack here for you, you know, to um, you know, to to play with while they're getting on board with it. They're not getting on board with it. That's what I'm getting here. So very very interesting right off the bat. Okay, so now let's take a look at these cards here, which are called the Dream Time Reading Cards. So this is theme cards. So what I'm going to do is I'm gonna go ahead and, and draw a few cards to see if there's any themes as far as how you and this person, and I already have a card flying off camera, come together, okay? Or something that would bring the two of you together, something that connects the two of you together in either the physical uh, world or just something. And we have vehicles and cars. What I'm getting right off the bat for some of you, of course, it could be that you meet this person, you know, through uh, something to do with a car, okay? It could be that uh, maybe the two of you uh, share the same passion for, um, you know, luxury vehicles, or it could be that you guys have met at a dealership. That could be very specific for some of you, but I'm actually getting more of a, a different message with this. So take it as it applies. You guys both have different ways, different vehicles of getting on board with this connection. The way that I look at, uh, and I'm not here to like really share my opinion on a bunch of stuff, but the way that I look at religion is that, you know what, it, it, in le unless it's, if it's not hurting you or hurting other people, it doesn't matter what your belief system is. I believe that we're all here to get to the same, uh, you know, the same understanding, the same, you know, to ascend. So whatever vehicle that happens to be with for you is how you're going to get there. Then what does it freaking matter? <laughs> what does it matter what my vehicle looks like and your vehicle looks like? As long as we're headed to the same destination of love, then what does it freaking matter? So that's just actually what I'm getting when I see vehicle and cars is that you and this person are going to get to this contract or get on board with the contract or work on this contract. You're going to go about it differently. So right off the bat, we got to have compassion for this other person that's different than we are. Okay. They're just different. So what else? Get two more themes here. Interesting for some of you, you could have literally met this person in school. You could have met them taking a class. You could have just met them while the two of you were examining something, learning something. You're at that point in your life where you're just really trying to figure out what the hell this is all about. But as an overall, what I'm getting here is that, again, this is about learning. The two of you came together to really learn something and to examine something on a very deep level. Last one, possessions. So this is about the material world. This is about our money and how we feel about finances and how our relationship is with money and what we have, what we want, what we can let go of, what we can't let go of. So what I'm getting for some of you is that your connection, you come together and it may be that uh, one person is a very very connected to the material world, whereas the other one, not so much. So that could be the difference right there between the two of you. And, you know, again, possessions, vehicles, and cars, it could just be education. This could be a status for some of you. It could be that uh, the other person is very much about the material world, very much about status, very much about education, very much about the way that things look. And this makes things very difficult between you and them because they're completely different. And you are this it could be the other way around though, but maybe you're that person that is, you know, you, you've already kind of, you already came into this life, not really given a shit too much about all this other stuff. You're already very highly evolved. And that might be one of the reasons that you and this person came together in this lifetime is because they're at a different level than you and you were, and you're here to come together with them to really help them to evolve, to let go of a lot of this material crap. I think it's really interesting that all these are in red because to me, red is root chakra. And so this is very earthly to me. So this is how you guys are going to come together in the material world. That's what we're talking about. Could be that you guys, this is a possession, meaning there could be something about your relationship where you want to hold on to this person. They come into your life and you have this 
just amazing connection and they just maybe they don't want to be in this connection with you long term and so the two of you have some sort of falling out or you break up and literally you feel like you want to die without this person you literally feel like a part of you has been ripped away from your life I mean that could be how painful it is for some of you and so you're really having to learn to let go you're really having to learn to have compassion for them as they learn this lesson without you Maybe they leave this connection with you in order to further their education. Maybe they go in search of fame and fortune to create more money. And this is something that someone just basically has to sit back and I'm not saying take, but this is just who this person is. And a part of your lesson when you came here was to have compassion and unconditional love for this person that is in a different vehicle than you are to get to their ascension process. So you and them are different is what I'm getting here. So let's go ahead and get some themed, well, not themed cards, but these are the additional cards of, let's just get a few things of what these experiences may have to do with and what they may bring out. So this is the other portion of this deck. There's two, okay. Okay, so when it comes to these different vehicles and ways of ascending or possibly, you know, just the outside material world, what do we got here? Yeah, prosperity. This is definitely, you see, prosperity doesn't have to just be about materialism. But when I see the word abundance and prosperity, that's usually what you will connect with the first. So there's definitely something about someone who has... Um, and I don't want to say issues with status, um, but it could just be very much in the ego 3D realm where somebody is really looking for their prosperity in the material world. And that's just where they're at at this present time. And I'm just getting here that the other person, probably the person that's watching this video, is looking in other ways to bring prosperity into their lives. So I'm just getting vibrationally that you and this person are just meant to be on a different level coming into this contract and that's what makes this contract so challenging and that's why you're going to find great wisdom within this contract is because you're here to learn something this lesson was not meant to be easy for you it's meant to be challenging to you okay so this is telling you here that you know it's this is about prosperity I am also getting to that this is about transforming your relationship with money. So I feel that somebody is here to, to literally transform their relationship to money, to look at it more as an energy rather than an earthly possession. And I'm getting that there's one person in this connection that is getting this and one person that's still stuck in the material world. So there is some kind of energy here that people are vibrating on different levels. They're experiencing success. They're experiencing prosperity on a completely different level than this other person. Next one, we have awakening. Oh my gosh, and four plus seven is number 11. There is definitely some sort of an awakening here that you come together with them and you have an awakening. It's probably the person watching this video. You've had your awakening. This person is also meant to awaken as well through your connection. But the thing is, I'm just getting here, and I'm not saying that they're not awakened yet, but they may still be of the material world. They may still be at that level of lower vibrational energy. That's just what I'm getting here. And the last card, connection. Oh, this is beautiful. This is definitely a beautiful connection. It is a deep connection. Um, you guys were meant to come together and connect in this lifetime in order for somebody to have their awakening is what I am getting. So this, and I always say these types of things just to kind of, you know, help people out there that are struggling. Some of you may be at that point where, you know, you, with where, where you're at with them is that maybe you just feel that this is, you know, this is a special connection. You know that they have added something to your life. You're taking something from this experience, but maybe you feel that this, they may never have their awakening or they may never get on board with this connection. So what you're doing is you're just, you're willing to move on at this point. You're willing to move forward into the world and connect with other people. So they served their purpose is what I'm getting for you watching this video. If you've had 
an awakening of sorts, if this person has brought you to some sort of light or some sort of awareness and understanding, brought you to the next level of your ascension or whatever the situation is, what I'm getting here is that the job, the contract, it may not be complete, but you've already learned so much. You've already been so blessed with the prosperity that this person has brought into your life. And if you're not there with this yet, I'm getting here that that is something that you can take from this connection now, which is what this person has brought into your life so far. Turn it into a positive, turn it into a lesson, no longer stay stuck in any kind of pain or any sadness or any lack within this connection. Really try to do what you can to take it to the next level for yourself connect with other people realize that you and this person are still connected even though you may not be with them in the material world anymore the 3d world or maybe you're not coming back with them again in the 3d world regardless you still have this beautiful connection with this person it just might not be in this actual ex like in this 3d existence but you're still connected with them universally spiritually energetically and you've had your awakening. So they've already bestowed upon you a beautiful gift. You've already gotten something here. You've already been gifted something with this connection. So try to be in that energy here. Try to be in this energy here, okay? That's really, really beautiful. It's very, very, very significant so far, very profound. So let's go ahead and take a look and see um, the personalities here. Let's see the personalities of you and them, you and this person things that you guys wanted to come here, how you guys might relate to one another, what you may bring out in one another. Let's go ahead and see what's the theme here for them. This right here is the archetype cards by Carolyn Miss. Okay, so this is a them. Interesting, we have shapeshifter and this is you. Oh, tickies. Oh, that's not ticks. That's Sharky. Hi, Sharky. See, so she's making a way over here. She's just waking up from the Hi, sweetie. And you are the engineer. Okay, so this is what we're going to do. So this is just one aspect, okay? So with these readings, like I could do a soul contract reading a month from now, and there may be more about your contract that comes through, but this is what's coming through today. So this person that you're watching the video for, we have shapeshifter, which says the light attributes of them are skill at navigating through different levels of consciousness, ability to see the potential in everything. You know, immediately when I got this, I got the word Aquarius, because to me, that is an Aquarian type of an energy. Somebody who is able to shapeshift through all kinds of different situations. They're very worldly thinkers. So are Sagittarians, but for me, Aquarians are just the jack of all trade of the entire, uh, uh, wow, can I see even talk, the Zodiac. So that's just what I'm getting here is that this person, it could, could be very different in the way that they think. They could be so open-minded that it almost seems like they're too open-minded to you. It could be that you are just, you have a hard time with the way that they are thinking about things. They could just be just a really free thinker, um, non-committal even for some of you. They're able to shift and shape shift into different things. It could be also too that they tend to um, just kind of go in and out of different situations and they adapt to those situations. Maybe they don't, they haven't found themselves quite yet. They don't quite know who they are. And so they're just able to just be free within any situation. And you don't really know, you don't really feel like you know who this person is, or they're constantly shifting and shaping as they are continuing to move forward in life. So this doesn't have to be a positive or negative. It, it just is what it is. But we also have projecting any image that serves your personal agenda at the moment. And that's kind of where I was actually going with this even before reading that. The shapeshifter is somebody who adapts to their, their environment and their situations. And sometimes that's not always um, authentic to who they truly are. And so it could be that they're trying to please other people that may be trying that they're trying or they're trying to project a certain image that suits whatever it is that they're doing. Um, so there is something about this person and you coming together that they may not be projecting who they truly are. Or it could even be that 
who they truly are is who you connected with because see you've come into this lifetime to connect with this person's higher self and maybe in a moment in a sliver of time they were that person for you and you saw it and that's what you connected with but then they shifted real quick because maybe something got triggered. Maybe they did not feel safe. Maybe they just felt like, nope, this isn't the road I want to go down. This isn't the, this is not the image that I want to project at this present time. I have other things that I'm concentrated on. I have other things that I need to do. And then they instantly shifted into another mode and they went into another direction. That is just what I am actually getting here with this person, even more than just being an open-minded person, even though that could apply to them as well. But I'm seeing that they come into this connection with you not really knowing who they truly are so you meet them at a time where they're still struggling with who they are in the world and who the world expects them to be this could be a people pleaser somebody who's maybe parents family or friends co-workers the community expect certain things from this from them and um, they're just basically projecting that image for them it could even be that this person projected a certain image to you because they felt like you needed them to be a specific way, but that wasn't truly who they were at that moment in time. So this is just a projector is what I'm getting. It's almost like a false sense of identity that's being projected out. But for some of you, I do feel that you did connect with this person's higher true self, but they, they shifted that rather quick and they are now in the energy of projecting their false sense of identity um, to the world and to you at this present time but see you know though you connected with them you know you know what you felt you know what you saw you know that 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 was who they truly were but they instantly shifted it that's the message so you you're the engineer it says the ability to give creative energy a practical expression talent for designing resolutions to common dilemmas but the shadowy attribute is the reliance on mechanistic mechanistic Oh my gosh, I don't think I've ever said that word before. Solutions without regard for emotional consequences. Okay, very interesting. I'm getting here with this energy that this may be like a, um, I want to say Virgo. And the reason I say this is because I have a Virgo moon. So I feel, and I know a lot of, I know a lot of Virgos. I, for some reason, have a connection to a lot of Virgos. Okay. Um, and I'm a Sag myself, but the engineer this is somebody who is able to be creative but they do it with a practical nature okay so this isn't somebody who's just going to be in la la land with like let's just say spirituality and just be real woo woo okay they need proof they need tangible evidence um but this is somebody who also realizes that they need to present things in a certain way if they're going to be creative they want to give it some sort of a practical logical twist so that could describe some of you. I actually have a few people in mind that I'm thinking of when, and that, and I, I, for, I tend to be that way as well because of my Virgo moon. You know, when I present information, I always want to bring some sort of down to earth, practical, logical state to it or, or sense to it. Because the thing is, is that you have to consider where everybody is at on their uh, spiritual journey and some people may be completely not even able to just follow what you're saying when you're talking in terms of light and love and all this other stuff like if you're not at that point people are not going to be able to get what it is that you're talking about so i find myself adding practical expression to my either spiritual or creative expression. So I'm only saying that as an example of this person, that that may be you. I feel like that person may be me, that this, that spirit is bringing through with this card here. So it makes sense to me. So I'm just bringing that up just in case you needed it to be broken down like that. So let's break it down like this again, because here I am trying to break shit down. So the shapeshifter, this person here is somewhat of a people pleaser somebody who doesn't quite know themselves, somebody who's trying to figure out who they are in the world still. And they are just, you know, out of fear, projecting something that they think they need to do, or they're just afraid to be themselves, their true authentic selves. The engineer, this is your energy that you bring into this lifetime. You have already done some work, either in a previous lifetime, or you already come to this planet very evolved. 
And so you already know a lot. You already have a good foundation is actually what I'm getting here. And so because of that foundation, you're able to engineer through different experiences in the earthly realms. You're not getting caught up in material shit. You're not getting caught up in labels and status and the ego and all that other stuff. Not to say that you never went through that or that you haven't experienced that. But you, if you did, it was, it was when you were younger and you have navigated since then through that energy. You and this person come into this lifetime differently and you guys are still different is what I'm getting here because they are still projecting an image, a false sense of self to the outside world and even to themselves. This person may be lying to themselves. You, on the other hand, you're being practical. You have a good you have a good uh, balance of practical and spirituality. Like you're not too in the clouds. You're not too in the dumps. You're just somewhere in between. You're not too much of the 3D. You're not too much of the 5D. You're somewhere in the middle is what I'm getting for this person. So if that's not resonating with you, don't take this portion of the reading. And if it is, um, you know, great. So let's just go ahead and get some additional energies from this. So if that didn't resonate, we're going to go into these. These right here are the, um, what is this deck here? Oh, this is the uh, Gods Gods and Titans deck by Stacey DeMarco. So we're going to use it for this shapeshifter person, their strengths and their weaknesses. So basically, you guys come into this lifetime. This is not the only way that you guys are, um, you know, relating to each other or how you are personality-wise. But I'm just getting here that there could just be some positive and light aspects to this. Could be that maybe you're such a practical thinker that this person, the way that they kind of shift and they're all over the place, it just might be very frustrating for you. And you just find yourself being like, I just can't deal with this. I can't deal with this, this energy. I can't deal with this all over the place energy. I need to have things to be practical. I need to have things to be a certain way. I need things to be, you know, like clockwork. So it could be for you, you need it to be a certain way. And this person is here with you to be the complete opposite of you, just to drive you nuts is what I'm getting here. And the reason why is it's to help you to basically accept something and have compassion that other people are different. People are different with the way that they ascend and the way that they learn lessons. And there is something about you watching this video, this person that is really here to learn something in addition to this contract. Like the lesson that you're learning from this person is not just about you and them, meaning you know, you're trying to come together with them as a, as a romantic partner. You want to be with them. I'm getting that a lot of this has more to do with what you're learning from them and how it's changing you because you're more evolved. So the person that's more evolved is going to learn more because they are open to the experience. The person that is not as evolved or awakened is not going to have as much um, it's not going to have as much effect on them because they're not until they are awakened or aware of it. They're not going to have a lot of change. So I'm seeing that the person that's watching this video is experiencing a lot of change, a lot of situations here. And some of those things could be positive and some of them could be very challenging and negative for you. So this right here is going to be this person's, if you're watching this video for their, um, their strengths and their weaknesses in this uh, lifetime and connection. So I'm going to take this and put this aside for now because we're just talking about them. Okay. So what is their, their strength coming into this connection or just in this lifetime? We have support. This is what I'm getting here. I'm not actually getting that this person is a support system for you. Sorry to throw it out the window immediately, but what I'm getting here is this person has a, a, a big support system. So one of their strengths in this lifetime is that other people tend to want to be there for them. Other people want to give to this person. So this may be another reason why they are in the shape shifty energy because they tend to basically adapt to whoever it is that's going to give them things. I'm not trying to paint this person out to be a, uh, you know, like a narcissistic, um, I even hate to use that word because it seems like every single time I use that in a reading, um, the comments are flooded with, you know, people that are, you know, claiming to be with a narcissist. And maybe some of you are, but I'm not trying to suggest that this person is a narcissist. I am suggesting that this person, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to uh, explain the, some of the personality types that a narcissist does hold, whereas they adapt to, you know, they adapt to other people and what they uh, want from somebody so that way they can get something. And that is somewhat a survivalist 
narcissistic, selfish thing to do. But sometimes people are in that energy for whatever reason. Sometimes people are in this energy because it's situational in their life. Maybe they're in a downtime and that's just how they know how to survive. Maybe they're not like that for an entire lifetime though. But I'm not just getting that this is a selfish thing for them. I'm getting here that there is people that just love them, people that want to give to them. This could be that they have really good parents or they have a really good family unit. They could have a huge family. Um, they could have a lot of friends. They could have a network of people that are there to literally support them and lift them up in this life. And so what I'm getting here is that this person's projection of who they are projecting out into the outside world is because of their surroundings. It is because of other people. So they are here to learn how to just take care of them and worry about them and not try to, um, not try to appeal to the masses. So the person that you're watching this video for, this is something that they have an issue with. They may feel that they need to be a certain way to other people because they don't want to let other people down or they want to live up to a certain set of standards. It could be that parents instilled this. It could just be uh, the society that they're in, the, the work that they do. They feel like they have to be a certain way. So this is a strength for them, but it can turn into a weakness is what I'm getting here. But they have a lot of support around them. Nonetheless, what is their weakness? Perfection. <laughs> Couldn't have been a more perfect card. They are literally trying to have the perfect image. Something about perfection, something about needing to be a certain way, just like we've been talking about here with them. That is the situation here. So they have a lot of support. They have a lot of love around them. They have a lot of people that want to do a lot of things for them. But this can sometimes turn into a nightmare for them because as much love and support, they may feel that they owe other people. They may feel like they need to please other people. They may feel like they need to be perfect for other individuals. And this person will suffer in the long run because they are projecting a false sense of identity. It's not tr who they truly are. That's a big problem. Okay, so let's go ahead and take a look at you, the person watching this video. So this is this engineering type of personality, somebody who needs to have things a certain way. You might have such high standards that no one's gonna freaking meet up to your standards. That's me. <laughs> so anyways, it's just very difficult when you're navigating from the engineer's perspective. But see, the thing is, is that engineers are awesome because we need them on this planet to do certain things that you could probably never do. But the thing is, is that there is something about this personality type. These personality types can sometimes be very rigid and uh, very judgmental. So this can be a problem problem as well. And so it could be that because this person is just who they are and they're trying to please everybody else and they're trying, they're living within the material world, it could be that you are very judgmental over this. It could be very judgmental the way that they live their lives. Maybe they live a life of luxury and you don't. And this is something that you just basically uh, are very judgmental over. So your strength in this lifetime is purpose. You are here for a purpose. Pele, beautiful. So you did come here. You didn't come here to screw around. And that might be one of the reasons why you're so serious, okay? It may be one of the reasons why you're just like, look, there's just certain things that need to be a certain way and I'm not here to screw around and I don't wanna waste time. I, I, you know, that's just how I am. So I came here for a reason. I came here to learn something. Let's get on with this. Let's, let's do something with this already. Let's stop wasting freaking time. I know why I'm here. So now you mean to tell me that I gotta sit back and wait for you to figure it out? So the contract does have an amount of difference. It has an amount of vibrational mismatch for a while. So however long that continues for you is how long it's just, it depends on somebody else. It depends on the other person, when they're going to have their awakening, when they're going to get on board, when they're going to stop being in this energy here of dealing with the outside world. But you came here for a purpose. And so what I'm getting here for the person watching this video is that you still have something you can do outside of this connection. This connection is not your entire life. This connection and contract is not the only reason that you came here. And so I'm just getting here that you did come here for a reason. You did come here for a purpose. So what is a weakness and challenge for you? Authenticity. 
Wow. So this is the thing. I mean, this is a dark card being authentic to who you truly are being authentic to, you know, th this could be that you are also somewhat of a perfectionist as well. And you may want to project a an image to other people that you've got it all together. You may be a people pleaser and this might not be authentic to who you truly are. This is an amount of trying to find out what your purpose is. Are you being authentic to your purpose as well as what I'm getting here? So there's definitely this energy of, you know, you might have struggled or ha are still struggling now to try to figure out what you are really meant to do and who you truly are and what's going to feel right for you. And this could have been a real struggle for you. It could be that this person has something to do with you figuring out what your life's purpose is. It's through this contract. It's through this experience with them that you finally become more authentic to who you truly are and you finally get on board with what your true purpose is in this lifetime. That's very life changing and that's very, very necessary for these uh, contracts for people to, uh, you know, to get to that point where they, they truly see the gift in it. And I already saw that you watching this video have already had your awakening. So you might still be in this process or you may have already discovered what the whole reason for everything is and what you're doing and why you came here and how you're going to be more authentic to yourself. Now, this could even be too that one of your weaknesses within this connection is that you were not authentic to who you were. You came into this connection and maybe you really wanted to project, you wanted to please, you wanted to be something for them, you wanted to be this perfect person for them. Because see, I'm getting here that you and them are not the same, but you are the same. So there could be some mirroring going on here, um, so, which is why I'm picking up on some of their energy when it comes to you too. But it could be that you were not authentic. You were not authentic to who you were truly were. You were not authentic. You were not the, your authentic self with them. And that could be one of the reasons why they you know, stepped away is maybe they sensed that you weren't being authentic or maybe they sensed that you were just kind of accepting a situation that just wasn't satisfactory. And sometimes that can, can be a turn off to people when they know that you're accepting less than who you truly are. It's like you're giving them your power and you are, um, you know, you would rather go without, you would rather sell yourself short than to be authentic to who you truly are. And that could have been a downfall for you. And I'm not just talking about this person. It could just be in this lifetime and you're learning, you're learning through this. You're learning through trial and error, not to do this. So, no more. Do you see how powerful this person is? No more. You're saying no more. I will never sell myself short again. I will always be authentic to what I truly am and what I truly want. Even if this person was to return into my lifetime, I will be myself next time. I will not sell myself short. And if they don't like it and they're scared by it and they're threatened by it or they don't want it, I don't give a shit. I'm going to be who I truly am. And that's all that matters. And this person is a part of this for you. They help you to get to be this way. So if you are angry or if you have been rejected or whatever the situation is with them, they helped you to get here or they're helping you to get there. So this is a good thing is what I'm getting here. Wow. Okay. So let's go ahead and see how they view you in this connection. So this is how they have viewed you in the past, how they may be viewing you now and how they may view you in the future. So let's take a look. So these could be the things that they saw in you, things they appreciated in you, whatever it is. Let's take a look and see how you affected them, how they felt, how they were touched by you. This is for the past. Wow. What I am getting here is that you did breathe some sort of energy and life into them. You did something to them. You guys it had a moment is what I'm getting here. You definitely had a moment in the past where they felt something. You breathed some life into them. They took it in. So they shared something special with you in the past. There was a moment between the two of you. So even if you're not together right now, just know that you did change this person. You breathed uh, some sort of life into them. You connected with them in a deep way. How they are feeling towards you or viewing you now. Didn't I say something about a mirror? And here it is. You've helped them to see themselves. So whatever happened between you and them, I'm getting here that they've taken time to really examine 
how they either treated you, the experience that you guys shared, whatever it is, they know themselves better now. They've learned from this experience. They may realize that there was some crap that they projected onto you long ago that really was more about them instead of about you. They may have made you feel it was about you, but really it was about them. And they're starting to figure this out now. They're starting to realize that they may have projected some sort of fear or some, some sort of crap onto you. And so they're getting to learn, they're learning um, themselves or learning who they are now. They're examining themselves on a deep level now. And I'm getting here that it has something to do with you future. Wow. You see this? These are two people that are again, mirroring each other. This is saying telepathy, nonverbal communication, energetic pulses, mind reading. This person is definitely thinking about you in the, in the future. You're in their, you're on their mind. Um, and there could be some energy where you're feeling them as well. You're feeling this telepathic communication. You could feel like, you know what this person is thinking. They could also be feeling the same ways as you, thinking the same things as you, but you guys aren't you guys aren't aware of this. You guys don't know it. I mean, maybe you watching this video are, but maybe they're not. But I'm getting that they're feeling some sort of a connection, an energetic connection to you in the future. But it's essay nonverbal, so you may not have communication with this person in the future. It doesn't mean ever, but you know, um, there's some nonverbal communication that's taking place between the two of you. This could be dreams, this could be thoughts, this could just be psychic connections, telepathy. It's very, very interesting, but this, this person feels you. This person felt you. This person is changed because of you or changing currently. Like they're looking in the mirror at themselves. Now they're examining themselves because of you and they're thinking about you in the future. They're connected to you still. So I'm not seeing that this connection is over between you and this person. So even if you have moved on even if they've moved on, whatever the situation is, there is still something that connects you and them. Just so you know. Hmm. Okay. So now we're going to go ahead and see how you are connecting, are connected with them, how they affected you, how you felt. Sorry, that was the Oracle of Mermaids, by the way, by Lucy Cavendish. This is Wild Wisdom of the Fairy Oracle Cards. Okay, so your past energy with them. Your past energy with them. This is talking about a story. Okay, it could be that this person was the person of your dreams. It was like everything that you felt when you read a romantic story. It felt like a freaking fairy tale. It really, really could. That might be how you viewed view this person. It could also be that you're currently writing a book about your experience with them in the past. I'm getting all of these energies here. So how you viewed them or felt about them in the past, it could also be a little bit of a negative. Maybe you felt like this person, um, you know, had a lot of stories and bullshit. You know, maybe you didn't believe everything that they said. And again, they did have an issue with being authentic, but I guess so did you. It did come up, but there was this energy here of projecting a certain image, needing to be a certain person for you. And they projected to you maybe what they thought you needed them. But again, for some of you, I do believe that this person was who they truly were and that's who you connected with and then they changed the story. So there is something about story. There is something about, you know, um, the way that things were and that has changed. Current energy. Midnight Prince. So when we have the Midnight Prince, so you're viewing this person here. You might be thinking about them at night, which is why it says Midnight you may be thinking about them when you are alone. You may be thinking about them when you're going to bed at night, when you're sleeping, when you're meditating. I mean, you might be thinking about them all the time. It doesn't have to just be at nighttime. But the prince is about being authentic and honest and asking for what it is that you truly want. So it could be that the way that you view this person is maybe they're not being authentic. Maybe they're not truly asking for what they want. So it's almost like in a way that you know that they are still trying to figure out who they truly are and what it is that they truly want and getting to the point of just ask for what you want. It may be that you view them as being somewhat scared to come towards you. Maybe something happened. Maybe they did something and they have not spoken to you in a long time. And maybe there's a reason for that. Maybe they, Maybe they wouldn't be able to just give you a call <laughs> and reach out. Maybe there's some sort of situation. Maybe there would be some sort of a problem. Maybe it's not that easy. 
And so we have ask for what you want and just be honest. You want this person to just basically come forward. You want them to basically reach out to you and just be honest and tell you what the situation is. So you're looking for this person for, you're looking to this person for honesty. You're looking for this person to tell you something. That is how you're viewing them currently and future energy towards them. We have her special place. You're finding your own safe uh, place or space inside and out. So what I'm getting here is that you are in the future. You're not viewing this so much as this connection. You're, you're finding your own place. You might be disconnecting from this energy. You might just be trying to find your own place in the world. So it could be that yes, currently the way that you're looking at this is that you need this person to validate something for you. You need them to tell you something, but maybe that is something that's not on the horizon right away. Maybe that's something that's just not meant to be. Maybe this is just something where you're just going to have to come to that conclusion that, you know, I'm not sure what's going on with this contract, but I know I need to keep moving forward in my life. So you're finding your own special place is what I'm getting here. The person watching this video, you might just, maybe you're just going to write a story. Maybe this just is a part of your story. It's a part of your experience, obviously being here, but you can't rely on this other person to make it or break it for you. You still have to continue living your life. And I'm getting here that you watching this video are going to find your own special place when it comes to this connection and in the world. And you're not going to worry about what this person is doing or not doing. You're literally going to move forward for yourself. That's just what I'm seeing here. So it's, it's very positive. Even though it might sound bittersweet, I'm getting here that it is very positive. So let's go ahead and take a look here at uh, what the two of you wanted to trigger within one, one another. What did you want to experience as far as things that may not be so comfortable? Let's take a look here. So this right here is the Love Pack Cards by Chuck Spazano. And we're going to go ahead and look at the surrender, the power of surrender cards, like what we need to surrender. So this is just going to be what you guys may have experienced within this situation with one another or what you might experience if you have not met this person. However, you're watching the video. Sorry to card fall off. <laughs> Letting go. This is definitely a connection where we need to let something go. Somebody may wanted to leave this connection. Somebody may have not wanted to be in it anymore. And a part of the lesson, and this card is green, so it is about healing, is we have to let something go. We have to let it go. If it's meant for us, it will return. If it's meant to be, it will come back. But we have to let it go. We can't hold on. We just can't hold on to this. So somebody could have left somebody. Somebody could have broke your heart, but you just, you know, you're having a real hard time. These two cards popped out. We have disillusionment again. Look at this. This person is standing behind this little thing where you pop your head in. And what they're projecting to you is an illusion. So again, there is some sense of false identity that's going on here. Somebody doesn't either know who they truly are or they don't like who they truly are. And so there is this lack. There's this lack of sense of self. And so this creates a big time issue. It could be that this person has to go off into the world and find out who they truly are. We can see currently, I mean, current energy that came through, if I can find it here, the current energy for them is this, the mirror. They're trying to figure out who they are. They're examining themselves. They're seeing who they truly are. Now, this is their current energy, you guys. That's it. And it's because of you. It's because of your connection. It's because of knowing you that they're doing this now. So do you see how you have positively impacted this person? They're seeing themselves because of something to do with you. So you guys were meant to go through this. You guys were meant to come into this connection and have these experiences. So that way somebody could figure out who it is that they truly are. And that can apply to you too. Cause again, we did have authenticity coming through for you. Who did you project yourself to be? Did you guys both do this? Were you mirroring each other in this experience? Were you guys both projecting a false sense of identity? Maybe you don't feel like you were, maybe you feel like you were being your authentic self, but maybe you felt this connection. It was so intense and you didn't want to lose it that you were kind of selling yourself short. Or maybe this person was like, yeah, I'm not really into commitment. And you're like, man, yeah, that's okay. But it's bullshit. You were, you wanted commitment. You wanted marriage. You wanted kids. You wanted the whole thing, but they didn't want it. And so maybe you sold yourself short in that area. Maybe you're selling yourself short now still. And there's something still that you need to basically stop doing. You need to stop being inauthentic even with them 
You may want them so bad that it causes you to want to basically sell yourself short just to have them in your life. So if you're still feeling that way and struggling, this is something you still need to learn from this person. And they're, cause they're in the process of learning, knowing themselves and, and examining themselves. We also have joy. You guys did come together to experience a joy. There was definitely some sort of joyous energy here. Even if it was short lived, it, it was here. You guys had some sort of joy. There was some sort of joy coming together. It wasn't just a horrible thing right off the bat and nothing but issues and problems. I mean, for some of you, maybe it was, but I'm getting here that you guys did come together and experience some joy. This person brought you joy at some point, And I feel like that's the message there. It's that not everything was terrible. Not everything you experienced with this person was bad. And maybe this is just one of the reasons that, you know, you're in a negative spot. If you are, that it's time for you to focus on the good times that you did have. Okay. The good times that you did have. Maybe that's the story that you're telling yourself. The story that you're telling yourself here. And this just came up. Where's the cards? The story that you're telling yourself. Is it a good story or is it a bad story? Is the way that you view your past, is it in a good light, positive light, negative light? What is this? So this is really going to help you on how you experience joy in your life moving forward. And that could be the key to this. There could be that, that could be the key literally right there is that if you're telling yourself the story that you are a victim or telling yourself the story that this person just did nothing but harm you, I mean, I see it in the comments all the time. I delete most of them. They're just so negative. And I'm not saying that we don't have right to feel that way or express ourselves in that way. But the thing is, is that if we are just still in that blame game over and over again and talking about how this person did nothing but abuse us and, you know, ruin our lives and all that other stuff, then what positive thing are we taking from it? How are we going to grow from it? We came here with them to learn something. So if you're just still in the blame game and you're stuck and you're feeling crappy and you just have nothing but hate in your heart, that's your prerogative to stay in that energy, but you're not going to be able to have any kind of breakthrough or ascension. You're going to still stay stuck. You're going to stay low vibration. So I'm just getting here that there is something that was at least good between you and this person. And it might be time for you to try to tap into that. And that might be why, where you're going to find your compassion when it comes to this connection, which is one of the reasons you came together with them is to learn something about compassion. That could be the key right there. And some people don't want to do it. They just don't want to do it. They want to stay stuck. And I, I understand. I really do. I get it. But it really is one of the most freeing experiences that you will experience in this lifetime. It is, um, it's like all the shackles that have been keeping you down for so long. Once you step into that energy of compassion and unconditional love for somebody, it is amazing. The miracle that comes afterwards, it's just, and you don't do it for a miracle. It just happens. And you were just like, oh my God, I, if I only knew that this is what was keeping me shackled for so long, I would have done this long ago. But the thing is you weren't ready, obviously. And so when it happens, it literally feels like a freaking miracle. You cannot believe it, that that was it, that that was the key to it all. It's mind blowing. This person or somebody was fear, fearing commitment. I, I picked it up earlier. You know, you may have sold yourself short and said, oh, that's cool. It's all right. It's all good. I could be in this connection with you, not be committed. Sure. Why not? <laughs> such bullshit. It's not true. It's not what you wanted. You wanted a commitment. You wanted this, this connection with them, but they may not have wanted it. They may still have a fear of commitment to this person, but that's something that they got to work through. So I'm getting that if fear of commitment isn't your issue. That's their issue. And they're still working on that. And that, again, they're examining themselves right now. I do that. I do really like that energy that's current. They're examining themselves. They're trying to figure out who they truly are and what they, you know, what, what did that means to them? You know, how they value connections or relationships, or if they have any value to them at all, they're trying to figure that out right now. And it does have something to do with you. So this person could have denied you. This person could have walked away from you because they didn't want this commitment, whatever the situation was. I'm just getting that this is a part of your connection. You're meant to experience it with this person. Again, we do have to, uh, delight there. De there's delight. And we also have receiving somebody gave to somebody in this connection. I really feel like the person that's watching this video, you gave a lot to this person because you want to know why they had that as one of their strengths in this lifetime. People just naturally give to them. People naturally give to this person. This person is very blessed with people that give to them. 
but a part of having that theme and support in this lifetime is that it tests you. It tests you big time. Are you going to be grateful for this bounty? Are you going to appreciate the gifts that you are being given? Or are you going to take advantage of people? Are you just going to be a taker and not a giver? So there is something that this person has to learn in this lifetime when it comes to the things that they are receiving. So they're balancing that out. And I'm getting that you gave a lot to this person. I do. And they experienced a lot of delight and joy and you experienced a lot of delight and joy giving. So I'm getting here that for, for um, some of you, you did give to this person unconditionally. And it may be after they basically left you go that you were pissed. But again, you know, that's a part of your healing. Did you give to get something? Did you give authentically? Were you giving to project a certain, you know, image? So do you see how you and this person are very similar? You're different, but you're similar with some of the issues that you guys wanted to come here and work on and the things that you triggered within one another in order to work on. So this to me is a combined energy. These are the experiences that you guys may have had already and that these are the things that just basically have come from this. It's like there's do you see how it's we've got we've got cards, two cards that are very heavy, but we do have some cards that are very healing and very joyous. So I'm seeing that there was actually more good to this connection than bad. But again, it's like the five of cups energy in the tarot. Are we going to concentrate on the bad or are we going to still, we're going to concentrate on what's still good in the situation. So that's really what I'm getting what the message is from spirit is that they're reminding you, it is the story you're telling us or telling yourself. So if the story that you're telling yourself and the world is that this person was a piece of shit and that they ruined your life, then that is going to be your story for the rest of your life with this person. It's never going to change. And I'm not saying that if you start telling yourself that you and this person are going to come back together, that somehow that's going to magically happen. But what I'm getting here is that if you tell yourself that this person did, they did serve some sort of purpose and some sort of lesson and that you guys did have something real at one point, and maybe they're just not on board with that right now then your experience with their whole situation and your whole contract with them will actually be transmuted and lifted to a higher vibration. So take it as you will. So what did you want to come here to surrender? What did you want to come here to surrender? What does this person help you to surrender? And what do you help them to surrender or surrender to? What does their energy help you to surrender or surrender to? Inner peace. Oh my gosh. I can totally identify with this. You know, again, the answer is inner peace. It really is. What is going to free you? I, I can't ever remember the expression, but it's a really good one. What is it? It's like, you know, ex expecting your enemies to die. I know someone's going to tell me what it is in the comments. It's like expecting the other person to die, but you're drinking the poison or something like that. Kind of like, you know, you're, you're spewing your hate and all, and all that energy you're, you're, you're using in a negative way. And you're, you know, hating on this person and you're pissed, but all it's doing is it's actually taking away from your own inner peace and healing. So is it worth it in the long run? It's not. It's better to have that inner peace within yourself and be at peace with what happened with them because this is actually going to help you to just be a happier, higher vibrational person in this lifetime. So you have to ask yourself what, what is worth it to you. So this person triggers you to have to surrender to inner peace and you may not want to do it. You may fight it tooth and nail. You might be watching this reading right now and saying, I'm not going to do it. I, I can't forgive this person. I hate this person for what they did to me. I hate this person for how they made me feel. But guess what? They're here to teach you that you have to choose peace because if you do not, you will never experience inner peace. You will never be able to have peace in your life. And I'm not just saying it's because of this person, like this person is a make it or break it for you, but you did come into this lifetime with a major contract with them to work on something. So they have a big part to do with your inner peace and how you experience peace within yourself and in the world. So if you cannot forgive this person, there is some kind of key to your inner peace that you're just going to continue to not feel. So it's up to you. 
What about you to them? What are you asking them to surrender to or surrender in this lifetime? We have surrender defensiveness. So they may fight you tooth and nail and being defensive and putting their guard up to you in this life, okay? Being like, nope, I'm not, and this is just what I'm getting. Nope, I, I, don't, I don't do commitment. I don't do marriage. That's, I don't want to do that. I don't want to be in a relationship with you. Please stop bothering me. I'm, I, you know, this person may be blocking you on social media. They literally might just have a shield up when it comes to you for some reason. And what I'm getting here is that you're triggering them to basically deal with things or open up to things that make them feel uncomfortable. So what they're doing is they are trying to defend themselves by not feeling these things, by not opening up to this experience. And so they're coming across as very defensive to you, blocking you ghosting you, walking away, maybe even projecting onto you and saying horrible things just to basically disconnect with you. But this is aggressive behavior. It's very hurtful behavior is what I'm getting. So you help this person to try to surrender their need to be defensive, their need to protect themselves, their need to stop fighting, fighting this, fight, not, not fighting this connection, but just fighting whatever it is that they're holding on to so tightly, their beliefs, their need to just, you know, not be authentic, whatever it is, you're trying to help them to let their guard down in this lifetime, to surrender this defensive energy that's not serving them. It's not serving them is what I'm getting here. So that's what you guys help, wanted to help each other do. Okay. All right. So now let's go ahead here and see how you help this person to grow the blessings that you give to this person. Let's see what that looks like. What is the blessings that you give to this person in this life? And the blessings that they give to you. And I have already seen the way that this person has blessed you already. If you are open to it, I see it. And that is you've had your awakening. You've had your awakening and you are living your life with purpose and authenticity now. How does this person bless your life? They make you healthier. That's it. Plain and simple. They make you a healthier human being, a healthier person taking care of yourself. Their energy, whether it's been challenging for you or whatever has blessed you to become, want to become healthy, to be in the best shape of your life, to be the healthiest spiritual being, just whatever it is, whatever that means to you, you are healthier now because of this person. That's the blessing that they give to you. What is the blessing that you give to them? Pure bliss. Wow, how beautiful is this? The, the, the blessing that you give to this person is that when they open themselves up to stop being defensive, to stop projecting the self, this uh, false sense of identity, to literally being authentic and being themselves and knowing who they truly are, pure bliss. There's something that opens up. This is crown chakra energy. There's something that opens up for them to where they are experiencing pure bliss. So what I'm getting is that if they have been fighting off being in a, like in a connection or a relationship, um, a true type of a spiritual connection, unconditional love type of a relationship that you have to offer them, I'm getting that if they were to let their defensives down and to let that in, they would seriously finally experience pure bliss. So that is the blessing that you give to this person's life is pure bliss. That is something that they can tap into if they're open to it is pure bliss. That is amazing. That is, I just am blown away. That is absolutely amazing. This person has the ability to feel this pure bliss with you, but they have to be open to it. They have to let that guard down. And that is what you're here to get them to do. And it doesn't mean you push, 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 but it just means that that's just, that's something that's, that's a, a part of this connection. It's a part of you doing something to allow them to feel that pure bliss. Okay, so let's go ahead and get some romantic energies here. Okay, so again, not everybody is experiencing romance. So you can take this romantically or not. This is the Whispers of Love cards. So you guys know that those cards I just used with the chakra mindset balance oracle cards. Whispers of love. This is this person. 
towards you. Slow down. Yeah. So this, this person was definitely not in the energy of wanting to go fast in this connection with you. Definitely getting that fear of commitment from them coming up again. They were not on the same pace as you. They didn't want to go fast. So if you experience this person pulling away, letting go, putting on the brakes, that's because there's something about them that's they, they feel uncomfortable with it. They feel uncomfortable. They don't, they're not, um, they're not super, um, it's not that they're not super passionate. It just means that they're very methodical and careful. They're not just going to just jump into a situation or at least maybe they did, but then they slowed things down severely after they jumped in, they thought about it and they're just like, holy shit, that was just way too intense, way too fast. Yeah. And we have forgiveness too. Very interesting. We have a, a, a number nine, which is about alone, solitude. And then we have two plus nine is 11. There is a spiritual connection here with the two of you, but they know that they did something here and they uh, know that they have disappointed you in the past for sure. They know that their energy towards you was disappointing. And that's what's coming through in this card, forgiveness. They know that you need to forgive them or that you have forgiven them. They know that there's an amount of forgiveness. They, they also um, may be working on forgiving themselves. They may not be able to forgive themselves for something that they did to you is what I'm also getting here. So there's definitely this energy. And we have you are limitless. So I am just getting here that they didn't let this connection hold them back. They still moved forward. Maybe they hurt you. Maybe they changed their mind. Whatever the situation was, they caused some disappointment for you. And it might not just be that they hurt you. It could just be that they just disappointed you. It was just disappointing. Their behavior was disappointing. It, it, it came on so strong. You guys started so strong and then they just, they couldn't keep up with it or they just, they just didn't want to go in that direction. So I'm just seeing that you're limitless. They were limitless. They didn't let it hold them back. They moved forward. They had places to go. They had things to do. They had a life purpose. They had, they had a life to live. And I'm just seeing that this person, the way that they dealt with this connection romantically is they, they bolted, they, they stepped away from it. They walked away from it. You actions speak loudly. So for you, I mean, they may have said all the right things, but their actions were different. Their actions were different. And that just might be something that, you know, was really hard for you. And it was a true love connection for you. You felt it on every level. You knew that this was a special once in a lifetime love. You may not have ever been able to feel this way about anybody else since this person. This might be very difficult for you to uh, try to have other um, experiences, but it does cause you to look into your inner strength. So do you see the thing is, see that heartbeat? Ooh. <laughs> you know, there's definitely, um, definitely something here, but the way that you guys responded to the love responded to the feeling between the two of you, um, was different. Okay. This caused you to go into your inner strength to find yourself. And this person literally disconnected and went off into another direction. That's why this person, you, you have found yourself or you are on this path to find yourself. That's why them right now, they're just now starting to examine themselves. They're just now trying to figure out who they truly are. So for some of you, I'm getting that this has taken a long time. This has taken a long time. So the way that you guys responded to each other when it came to the romance or just your love for one another, it was different. They initially, <clears throat> They initially may have felt something because we did see, you know, how they felt with you. You did give them something. There was something, there was a shared moment. There was a special moment between the two of you, but it just may not have lasted very long. It could have been that this person immediately, you know, cut it off, slowed down, disappointed you and just was on their way. That's just what I'm getting here. And you, on the other hand, felt this connection like, oh my God. And you realize that their actions were different than what they were saying. And it caused you to have to look into your inner strength and grow from this. So, so we have two very different uh, ways that people dealt with this and the, the way that they experienced it and what they did with this energy. But I do like that they are starting to see something about themselves and it's because of you and they're having some sort of connection with you in the future. So that to me is, is a positive thing. You're not completely gone from this person's life. They haven't forgotten you. They still feel you on an energetic level is what I'm getting here from spirit. Okay. 
So let's go ahead now and go into, um, let's see. I know some of this is redundant, but I'm just kind of trying to get into different layers of this reading here. Why don't we go ahead now and look at <clears throat> some of the things that we're meant to experience within this connection, okay? What are some of the things that, um, as far as like a, a love, a romance, or just, when I say love, it doesn't have to be romantic, but a lot of you are probably um, watching it for that purpose. But what kinds of things are we meant to experience? So these things that are coming up in this portion, maybe things you've already experienced or things to come. So this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to actually break it up past, present, future. So in the past, in the past, we have achievements. Somebody was very focused on their goals. That's the thing. And I'm really getting here that the person that you're watching this video for was just very much not focused on having a relationship. They were very focused on their goals. They were very focused on something that they needed to achieve in the world, their dream, because that's what it says. Keep focused on your dream very focused on my dream. I'm very focused, like a one track mind. I'm focused there. I'm not focused on having a connection right now. I'm putting the brakes on this. I, I have this feeling. I, I don't want to go past this point. I can't, I don't have time for this. I have something else I need to do. Present. We do have the moonlight goddess, which talks about repressed emotions, healing and reflection. I mean, that's where people are at right now with this connection. People are repressed. People have repressed their emotions. Now they're healing. We already know that you watching this video, that you've done a good amount of healing. And now we have reflection. We already know that this person is reflecting right now. So everything is on track is what I'm getting from spirit. How, what you guys were supposed to experience, what you guys are experiencing now, and what about the future? And we have enchanted forest, which is talking about mystery, magic, and excitement. So anything is possible is what spirit's saying. This is an enchanted forest. It's very enchanting. It draws us in. There could be something about a moon phase as well that possibly brings somebody uh, back. It could be that somebody is now processing things because of a moon phase. They're letting certain aspects go. Whatever this is, there is some sort of magic and mystery. It's very exciting, okay? So based on that, just kind of where things are, where things were, and where things are in the future, I want to go ahead and get three cards for the future. What is the projected energy for these two? We have yin yang, winter's end, and peace. Oh, I love this. This is beautiful. So this is the future with you and this person, yin yang. You're balancing each other's energies. You're creating harmony through balance. So you're literally, this is feminine and masculine energies coming together and balancing each other. This is about balancing your own energies within yourself. So what does this do? We have the winter's end. And the winter's end is about regeneration, rebirth, and a positive outcome. There's going to be some sort of regeneration and rebirth and a positive outcome from all of this. And we have peace. Right now, we have dissolving unwanted or disturbing thoughts. So do you see how we're healing? Do you see how we're turning things around? And it's through this balance within ourselves. We take the time to heal. We take the time to do something on our end in order to balance out this energy. And we have a positive outcome coming from all of this. We're choosing peace. We're choosing peace. And that came up earlier, that we have to choose peace. We have to choose that surrender to inner peace. And there it is. You dissolve your unwanted and disturbing thoughts. You balance out your energy. And then now something can end. Now something can finally come to a close. And we have a rebirth and a positive outcome from all of this. That's amazing. Wow. Okay, so I know that this is turning into a really long reading, so I'm just going to go into a few more things and then we'll close up. So let's just go ahead and see how you and this person are connected. You guys are connected telepathically. So let's just go ahead and see in what way and how are you feeling them? How are they feeling you and how are you feeling them? This right here is the Chakra Insight Oracle Cards. Okay, so this is how um, they are feeling you. They're feeling you here when it comes to your third eye chakra. So again, telepathically, there it is. So whatever it is that you are thinking, they're, they're picking up on it. So your thoughts are what they're picking up on, my fans on, which is why stuff is uh, falling fall around. But we also have something about perception, how you're evolving, what you're learning, the lessons that you're learning, 
um, whatever you're thinking, whatever you're uh, exposing yourself to, your energies, I'm getting that it, they're tapped into that. They're feeling you on that level. They're learning something. Could even be that you have something that you are uh, teaching and they're actually learning from this. I don't know. That could mean something to some of you. Maybe some of you are, you know, in the public eye. Maybe some of you have a, um, you know, a way of getting information out. And this person is, is, is listening to it and they're learning something from you. What about you for them? How are you feeling them? Oh, wow. You're feeling them on a, on a very interesting level. <laughs> this has come up before. This is about pleasure. This is about sensuality. This is the sacral chakra. This is about your physical body and literally just feeling them in that sexual way. It doesn't have to just be sexual though. I mean, this could be pleasure as in, you know, this, this has nothing to do with sex. This has everything to do with like, you just feel good whenever like you're feeling their energy sexually, you're feeling them on that energy level to where you're connecting with them in that way. Take it as it resonates with you. I know a lot of you, um, you know, experience all kinds of different things, but how you're feeling them, you're feeling them on the sacral chakra level. You're feeling them in a very sensual um, energy. And what is the shared energy between the two of you? Yeah, again, this is the uh, third eye chakra. You guys are definitely uh, connecting here in this um, third eye chakra, you're connecting in that energy for sure. Uh, you know what? Actually, guys, I'm sorry. That's the crown chakra. This is the uh, third eye chakra right here. This is the crown chakra. So this is the highest chakra of all. So, I mean, this person is de definitely connecting with you in a very universal cosmic way. And the two of you are connecting in the same way. You guys are both also um, being inspired by one another. Your energy inspires the other to grow, to push forward when it comes to creativity and ideas. Um, any kinds of sparks that you have, you guys are inspiring one another. And I think that that's absolutely beautiful energy to, to be in when it comes to this type of a connection is use this energy in order to create change for yourself, in order to create and inspire the world. So you guys are inspiring each other in order to grow in a very positive way and to do something in the material world. Okay, so let's go ahead now and take a look at some future energies of this connection, all right? What are some of the possible future energies of this connection? This is the Tarot Grand Lux. And I'm not going to use any reversals today. I'm just not feeling it, so I'm not going to. God, there's so many decks that I didn't even use that I wanted to use, but I'm just like, this video is almost going on an hour and a half. So, okay. So the future energies <clears throat> between you and this person, we do have the 10 of swords. So there is some sort of an end of a cycle, end of a cycle, end of the road. It's like, it doesn't get any worse than this. So you and this person, I mean, something is just finally coming to a close. We also have ideas and that just actually came up here. There could just be some sort of um, creativity, it could be somebody that's an artist. There could just be some kind of energy here that's surrounding that. But this is about thinking about ideas and thinking about, um, you know, how to do something, being creative when it comes to something. So what does this something have to do with? how to offer love. This is just what I'm getting. We go from the 10 to the one, you guys, this is something that has been dead for a while or has just died between the two of you. Something that has ended over a backstabbing. Even somebody is thinking creatively on how to offer a cup. Now, how to start this, how to get this thing rolling again. Okay. So that very interesting here. What I'm seeing very interesting. Yep. It's like trying to figure out how to do it. Like we have somebody who's laying down and they're just kind of watching somebody from afar. Um, you know, it's like, do, do I approach them? Do I come toward, what do I do? Does this person want me in their life? There is some kind of an energy here where it's trying to figure it out. It's trying to figure out what to do about this. Yeah. This is how do I offer something? So, okay. This is what I'm getting here. That somebody's thinking to themselves. Okay. I feel a certain way. I want to start fresh. I want to start new. I'm feeling better now. The ace of coins is what you really want to offer. You want to offer something that's solid this time. Because remember, maybe this person or you were not being authentic before. And so you guys have both taken time to become more authentic to who you truly are. And now they want to offer you something. But this offer is going to be different this time. So again, they may not just rush in and offer you this because they're 
they, they may not be able to offer you the stability that you're looking for at this moment. So they're thinking about it. They're, they're trying to be creative on how they're going to bring this forth or how they're going to do it. There is some kind of energy going on here. Yeah. And somebody wants somebody. This is a card of desire. This is a card. But see, look at this woman. She kind of looks a little standoffish. So somebody's not sure here. Somebody's not sure if this person wants them to re-enter into their lives. That person could be you. Yeah, strength. It's going to take a lot of strength on somebody's part. A lot of strength on somebody's part in order to uh, offer these, offer this with what they want. But this is an ending, you guys, and a brand new fresh start. This is like the winter's end that just came through. Death and then rebirth, regeneration, a positive outcome. So really what I'm seeing from this contract, you guys, is that what is meant for in the future, but the thing is what's meant and what will happen are two different things. But what I'm seeing here is that you guys are meant to go through some sort of an ending with this person and it does feel very traumatic, I'll tell you that, because the Ten of Swords is some heavy duty energy where people might have even felt backstabbed for some of you. But somebody is really thinking about how to come forward towards someone creatively different and offer a love but it's a cup that's got a foundation behind it it's not just any cup it's not just a fresh new beginning it's a solid new beginning it's different than what they offered before and so somebody's trying to figure it out and somebody's not sure it's going to take a lot of strength and courage on this person's part in, in, in order to break through the cycle and either come back or maybe that's your energy and you want to come back but I really feel it's this person that you're watching this video for. They're thinking about how the hell they would come back into your life after something that happened. That's just what I'm getting here. And they're having a hard time with it. So why don't we go ahead and get some energies um, from Spirit to close up the reading. On this connection. What is their advice? What do they want you to do? This is the Art Through the Star Stream Oracle. And what angels are with the two of you. I just want to look at that as well. Wow. Here we go. God, there's so many cards I didn't get to use. Shoot. Deep memories are stirring is what spirit wants you to know. This person's thinking about you. You're thinking about them. And it's deep. I mean, this person's going deep. You're going deep. Memories are a stirring. That is happening. Start anew and begin again. The end and the new beginning. Wow. There, somebody's thinking about how they want to start fresh. Somebody's thinking about how they want to start over. So it's deep. It's not just some surface crap. It's deep. Yeah. Let's go forward and leave the past behind. That's it. But it could be that, you know, somebody is having these memories and they're just like, do I just move forward? Do I leave the past behind? What, what do I do? What do I do? I'm getting some deep contemplation going on here. Yes. Lift the curse and forgive. Exactly. Spirit is saying to you right through this, that if you have not forgiven this person and you haven't lifted this curse per se, that this may be something that is holding this connection from returning to your life. It could be that this, this person is viewing you as that, uh, that very, you know, that person that they want to come towards that desired, uh, that, that, uh, person that was in the red, but they looked really scary, I'm not trying to put the blame on you watching this video, but if this person is you and you're the one that needs to forgive, you got to lift this curse so that way this, they can come through if that's what you truly want not saying they're gonna but that's you do have to and we have a comforting presence is on the way so a comforting presence would be angels a comforting presence would be spirit assisting in the situation so now i want to go ahead and take a look and see how spirit is assisting <laughs> angel of procrastination this is somebody who's procrastinating i don't know if i can do it i don't know if i can i don't know if i have the strength and courage i don't nah i don't think i could do it I'm not sure I want to do that. Could be you watching this video. Maybe you're just like, eh, this person's probably never coming back. So I'm just going to go ahead and continue to, you know, do this and do that or stay, stay 
in situations that maybe aren't good for me or keep eating like shit or whatever the situation is. Maybe you're thinking like that. It's easier to just not change than it is to actually improve ourselves and to do something. So I wanted to get, yeah, here we go. These cards right here, which is the Earth Oracle card, just to kind of get like what spirit is helping us when it comes to procrastination. So somebody's procrastinating big time and an angel's trying to like go, hello, you need to get off your ass, you need to do something, you need to figure it out. Yeah, fire, Pat, trying to give you the freaking fire. This is the firecracker under your ass, angel. That's what I'm getting here. That angel of procrastination wants to take that fire and light it under your ass to get you moving. But unfortunately, they can't do that. But that's what they want to do is what Spirit's telling me. And we have angel of decisions. Somebody has some decisions to make. Seriously. Somebody's thinking hard. Somebody's thinking deep right now. Somebody's thinking deep. And we have child innocence. This is about the past. Somebody is thinking about the past. Somebody is thinking about, they're reminiscing. This is very Six of Cups energy to me. <clears throat> they're thinking about somebody from the past. They're trying to make a decision based on somebody from the past. And angels of the universe. It's like there. It's like the universe is calling you down a, a certain path, a new a new path. Something is opening up here. And we have full moon completion. The angels are literally asking you to go towards this completion. We already saw the Ten of Swords. We have to complete a cycle before we can have that new beginning, that fresh new beginning, that fresh new start. So we are being asked through this contract with everything that came through. Wow, an hour and a half. That was a long reading, you guys. But if you hung in there, <clears throat> hopefully you enjoyed it. You got something good from it. This is just Spirit's way of saying that uh, we need to complete some sort of a cycle here. We want a brand new beginning and a fresh new start. We came here to do some major work with this person. And even if it's without them, we can still complete the cycle. So that way we can have that Ace of Cups energy, the Ace of Pentacles energy. That way we can move forward in a very positive direction for ourselves and have happiness. Okay, because a comforting presence is on the way. You've got to lift this curse and forget. If you want new energy here, you got to be willing to, to go forward and leave the past behind. If you want to start anew and begin again, you, you've got to do the work. You've got to do the work. And even though this is a combined contract, if the other person isn't going to get on board with this contract, you still came here to learn something. There's still something of value here for you. And so you don't want to can that energy just because the other person may not be awakened or not on board at this present time. You can still move forward with your own journey. You can still do the work. You can still live your life to the fullest. You can still experience all the beautiful gifts that this life and this contract and this journey has to offer you. But the choice is yours. So anyways, I hope that you guys enjoyed that. Please, um, you know, let me know if, if you did like it and if you didn't. Um, I probably don't really want to hear that, but whatever, you know, everybody's entitled to their opinion. But anyways, thanks so much for watching you guys. Have a great day.